We hear from the Speaker of the House, Tim Jones, is joining us quickly. So, Tim, please come on up. Good afternoon, everyone. I know you're, uh, I know you're, we're super pressed for time, and my chief of staff is trying to drag me out right now, but uh, I just experienced the ultimate in self-control, surrounded by food, and I'm starving. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're working very hard down here in your Missouri House uh, to protect uh, your values of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness every day, I can tell you that. We've got an aggressive agenda, but it is one that is one of freedom and opportunity for all Missourians, because uh, that, is, that is our message to all Missouri. You know, I just, uh, I, I really always enjoy uh, listening to, uh, to John Bruner, and, and I can just say ditto to every, everything he's, he said. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great year. We, uh, I want to thank you for giving me the first ever veto-proof supermajority in your Missouri House. It, uh, it has made uh, Governor Nixon an honest broker, if nothing else. Uh, we were able to define him as he, he truly is. You know, he came now that he's been reelected. He's taken on all sorts of issues that he didn't dare utter before the election. But uh, but he has to deal with a supermajority of common sense conservative Republicans that he's elected in both the House and the Senate. And and there's there's a lot going on. And. Uh, you know, I just uh, I think we have we have a lot of hard work to do, and I'm so glad that you all are here. And it's such a, a huge group of people, and some young people in the back, and people from all over across the state, men, women, uh, and it, it's really wonderful. We need to grow this room uh, tenfold uh, because we've got great building blocks in our state. We've got that supermajority in the House and the Senate. We've got six uh, Republican congressmen, uh, but after that. We, we lack leadership at the executive level. We have two of the offices right now, and that's it. And I can tell you that most of the damage being done to your state is done every day on the executive level through the hidden third rail of government, which is rules and regulations and bureaucrats. Um, we're down here doing it the old-fashioned way, the cumbersome way of representative democracy, passing one bill at a time, through each chamber at a time, trying to get them to the governor's desk. When we're not here, when we are here, every day there are dozens of state agencies passing all sorts of rules and regulations that we get to find about on the back end, just like all of you. We, I, don't know what, I don't know what DESE's up to every day. I don't know what the Department of Ag is up to every day. I don't know what DNR is up to every day. We find out later like you do, and then we have to react to them. It's getting... It's getting uh, exhausting uh, having to react to that every year. We'd like to have some leadership on that executive level. So to do that, we have to take these great building blocks, what we've built with our, with our majorities in the General Assembly, with our congressional delegation, and transfer that up to executive leadership. Uh, John Bruner talks a lot about that as the executive of a company that his family founded, and he carries on that rich tradition of freedom and opportunity. You know, I think every day about two people who are no longer with me but are very important to me. Uh, my two grandfathers from each side of my family. Uh, two men who had very different experiences in this country. One was a uh, first generation Italian immigrant, came over on the boat uh, in the 40s. They probably drafted him and sent him back on the boat to Italy, on the, to the front. <laughs> Thank God he survived, otherwise I wouldn't be here today. My grandpa, Freddie. Um, and uh, he came back and uh, worked really hard. He was a blue collar worker, raised my mom and her sister. Uh, struggled, sent him to college. My grandpa Jones, the Joneses, I guess, came over on the Mayflower, and uh, we were farmers in southwest Missouri. And uh, dirt farmers raising some cattle. Bought that first 40 acres back in the 40s. Both those men and their wives and their family members lived the American dream. Because they had what? The freedom and opportunity to do so. There was no central planning authority, some giant government entity that told them how to farm or how to go get that job how to send their kids to college. They just saved, worked, saved some more, worked some more, and spent the money within their means to live that American dream. For some reason, a big chunk of this country has decided to concede that American dream to that central planning authority, thinking that for some reason they could do better. If nothing else, these past four years of federal policies have shown us that's an abject failure. Every day, some more bad news comes out about Obamacare. And today, another story came out. There's an actuarial study done by actuaries, not politicians, actuaries, with that boring process of studying numbers. And they said premiums in Missouri are going to skyrocket under Obamacare. So I think the public is starting to get it. 
And we've got to take these building blocks that you've helped create in your general assembly, in your congressional delegation, and transfer them up to executive leadership on the state level and on the federal level. We have a lot of work to do to take our country back to its great values that it had on those previous generations I've referenced. Here in Missouri, we're cutting your taxes this year. We're lowering regulations. We're saying we're not going to dump billions of dollars into a broken Medicaid system unless we get massive reform. And we're making sure that you have the right opportunities and choices to educate your children, whether it's private schools, public schools, home schools, or charters, because you know best how to take care of that next generation that's going to be our leaders of tomorrow. So, Thank you for participating in this. Please keep talking to your representatives and senators. They're the ones closest to you. We're the ones that can get things done. Thanks a lot.